Hey, this is what you're not listening to. Check this out. Yeah, it's not all about growing vegetables. Look at that. Uh huh. That's gardenia right there. I got two of them. Yup. That was some orange mums, cause and then white daisy in the middle. That's a montauk. That's you know, Halloween coming up. Gotta have some color, man. And looky there. These are plants inside the house. Well, some people call them house plants. Uh, I don't want to be contrarian, so I'm gonna call them house plants. They look lovely. My flying pig. All right, last week we were talking about growing greens in the fall. We're going to, I'll show you, man, a little lot of progress in the last week, I'm telling you. But tonight we're going to talk about planning, yup, for spring. What year? It's 20, for spring 2022. Mm -mm 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 Let's get to the plants. That was my fountain. That's where the frogs live, Mary Frog. Oh, I need to fix that pump there. But that's not what this video is about. We are talking about planning your spring 2020, 2022 garden <laughs> in the fall. Yeah, uh -huh. So let's start it in my favorite spot. You look at this beauty. Some of this I'll have to <clears throat> get inside the garage, <clears throat> get in the window unit in there so I can control things. Probably humidifier. Yeah, if I have to tell you what that is. Hmm. You might want to ask me. This you might not know. That's French tarragon. That's actually basil. That's a ruby basil. So next year, the basil's going to run right down the middle. This stuff, rosemary, thyme, beer garden sage, tarragon, uh, golden edge sage, Greek oregano, tricolored sage, and then zippity doo dah will be basil. Hey, by the way, see this right here? You can grab that, those seeds are right up against there. I've actually been just cutting them off and burying them. I put that in, just to remind me I did it. If they come in too soon, they won't make it. But if they sit there and winterize, cool. But I'll save some more of these anyway, put them in a bag. So if these do not <clears throat> make it, I'll plant them again. And then I'm going with chives here. And they were put in. They should be up in a couple of weeks. Hopefully get enough time to get established before uh, the first frost and we'll be good to go. That is Italian flat leaf parsley and next year will be year two. So we'll let that roll again. I might try to mess with that root next year. <clears throat> Use it as a spice. This right now has a couple of green onions left and a uh, cubanel. And that will be uh, another parsley all right so we'll have year two parsley and year one parsley that's kind of how you want to do that just keep it rotating around you could even save the seeds off of that next year if you want it to uh, but that's how that's going to work stevia same thing i'm going to try to save these seeds drop me a comment down there if you got any hints about that <clears throat> and that's a tender perennial so that will go inside i'll try to keep it alive cut it back all that good stuff but I'm gonna add a second. If I can keep this one alive, there will be two pots of stevia. This is lemon balm. This is gonna die back when the frost comes. I'll cut it back and just let it sit there. It'll come back. <clears throat> and that's actually chocolate mint. Same thing, it'll die back, but it will come back as well. So that's the main uh, herb center. Now there is a small exception here that's cilantro. I went ahead and planted it this fall. We've been using it quite a bit. And again, I think I can get that through the winter. So then it'll come back next year. I have a second run of cilantro fall, spring. And then when it goes to seed, I'll have the uh, coriander plus cilantro seed. So keep that cycle going. Something to keep in mind. That, oh my goodness, let's see. I think that's a three year. So next year that'll be four. I think, I got a, I got that's an old back to back. That was actually moved out of the ground over here in year two. So yeah, that's a three year old. So it'll be four years old next year. That's the primary rosemary bush. That's where we get, this is the primary uh, rosemary that we use for the kitchen, which is right over there. Cilantro, kitchen, herbs, kitchen's right behind me. Good setup. 
So then down here, what I'm gonna do is get these peppers that I want in containers off of the herb center and ISO them over here, semi-rectangle. Um, and it'll be left over. This will not be the only place we have peppers. This is marjoram, also tender, very tender, so it'll die back. So that'll be cut back and moved in. And then these are just some leftover super chilies, but this will come back just where it's at. I'll replant this next year, having super chilies here. That's just leftover peppers. Maybe get some seed out of that. So yeah, this is, as you can tell, this is our cooking station, really. All the herbs, some chives coming back. We had green onion this year. We're going with chives next year. We'll put some hot and mild peppers over here, along with in the garden. This is what we talked about last week. And uh, I just want to show it again so you can go back and look at last week and this week's video. You can see how much more growth has happened in a mere uh, six days, really, as I'm filming this. It's coming along nicely. So I have some slug damage, not too worried about it. It's not annihilated. There's some wee rin choy. Carrots are doing their thing, getting up. That's the lettuce we're eating on now. That's the oldest in the ground. Uh, most of these onions are new, overwintering. This stuff, highly recommend this Chinese cabbage. There's nine in there. We've had about four different meals now using that stuff. You can't even tell. It's lovely. And then that mustard I showed last week on the wall. See, it's now up and over. That is a giant red mustard if you're interested in knowing what that is. And these are all mixed. But what I'm gonna do next year, all this will stay here, but next year, instead of doing this rose-style mix, I'm gonna do it like these mixed greens. Just toss everything in so we'll have stir-fry, lettuce, or salads, or sandwich greens, whatever. This, again, I think I said this last week, that's for zucchini next year. That is for the Mega Marley. Cherry, tomato. And of course the grapevine, I need to go mess with that a little bit, maybe prune it up a bunch. But really my main thing is getting this fence fixed right here. Long story. You gotta mend your stuff too. This is now on the list to do. I'm gonna start clearing this out from a grow station tools and whatnot and get it much better organized. All right, so over here on the south, this is what we call the south bed. bed. Uh, <clears throat> Cucumbers were in here last week in a different location. So I'll probably put two Space Masters in that and two in that one. That'll give me four cucumbers over here. This year, this was our pepper and eggplant center, plus all of these volunteer feather salosia. <laughs> My bees. Um, still getting eggplants, still getting peppers. But next year, this is going to be corn with um, some pole beans, some sunflower, and at least one watermelon plant. All right, so we're going to rotate out of that. Blueberry. A pink lemonade blueberry. And update the fig tree still hanging in there. That's a black mission. So, so far, so good. And although we only had a 33% success rate over here, the two living are still living and have actually gotten bigger. So, that's looking good as well. Got to pull that vine out. If you ever see that vine, looks like bat wings, get it out before it gets much bigger than that because I'll show you what it takes like right now. That's what it's going to become if you don't get it out. So, get it out if you got it. Yeah, we're still covered up over here, but here's the plan for this garden. And actually, it's already started. Um, see the shoots coming up. We'll continue to mulch with this dried grass as we go along. This is our garlic bed. 
soft neck garlic bed right here. These hot peppers may or may not end up over here. They may end up in the herb center, but some type of pepper is going to end up in the wall. It's a great technique. Just make sure the bottom of the block has access to the ground so it can get the good stuff. This will be cut back naturally. That's okay. This will be cut back. We've got I don't know, five left. We had six. Last year we had 16. Okra, okra. And we're saving now. We're letting the pods go big to save some seed. There'll be about three okra here. And then going forward will be about five pepper plants. Uh, all mild is the plan at this point. But we all know how plans will change. But that's fine. You can't. You know, you gotta have a plan. You gotta kinda know what you want to do. Over here, seriously contemplating back in this corner, putting in a mushroom go a mushroom a grow center. Right now I'm just storing some older equipment and wood. That's the original front door to this house. I'm gonna use that for a table on blocks. Probably just for specimen plants, but hopefully I can get some mushrooms going back here. And we'll have a picnic table, maybe a swing set or whatnot. An old two cycles. Man, get, a, get some battery operated stuff. I don't hear that. I don't want to hear it in the afternoon. All right, I'm relaxing. Blackberry, either Navajo or Apache, I can't remember. In fact, John that sold it to me said he couldn't remember either. It's one or the other because that's all they sell. So I'm not sure I ever knew. That's Elderberry doing its thing. Looking good, looking good. More elderberry, another blackberry down there. So the plan here for the spring is just continue on. I'll probably propagate some of that next spring. Get a nice uh, U-shape in here. That's a great vine in the back. So basically get a U-shape of berries in here. All right, so you have to enter right here where I'm standing, which comes back to the yard and the north garden. And we're going with our pasted tomatoes here again with companion plants. Right now, we've got a few collard greens left and some rutabaga. Uh, some peas in here, some green beans. This will all be green beans next year. So what's the plan? Right here on this side of the basil is going to be our uh, eggplant center two black beauties and two rositas right here you see a cubanelle and these are brussels sprouts they'll be gone next year of course so we'll cross we'll have cubanelle in each corner pimento in each corner and in the middle will be a space master or an smr 58 i haven't decided but there'll be a cucumber there over here there'll be a cherokee purple slice and tomato heirloom but then the foreground will be a lot of radish. And then right there will be one um, Carolina hybrid cucumber. And then I might throw in another Space Master here. I don't know. But two here, four back there. They'll give me six cucumbers. So that should be plenty for two people. This is the Solomon Seal I've moved back. I'll have to cut that back. Uh, divide it. Put some more elsewhere. But these will stay here now. Kind of make a little marker for the path. Right there is the spaghetti squash. Another spaghetti squash. And another spaghetti squash. They were going bad, so uh, I'm going to let them decay, rot back here. There's actually one more that's over there. So these are long-term brush piles, so I won't be messing with this to put anything in the garden in the spring. So, you know, if these guys come up, then uh, there you go. Free seed, nature's way. Either it do or it don't. And then back, I think I talked about this last week. This is gonna be our Irish potatoes. That's gonna be sweet potatoes. Right now it's got some, uh, 
red onion in it, you can see, but then a variety of other seed that came out of the compost pile. That's a zinnia. These are some kind of melon. That's some kind of succulent flower. I, I know what it is, I just don't know what the name of it is. So yeah, this will be the potato center. North will be your green beans. And uh, just a selection of tomatoes, peppers, some cucumbers, and then eggplants, and then our paste and tomatoes over there. Corn, more green beans, sunflower, two buckets right there will be more cucumber, and then that's the cilantro. Oh yeah, radish will be back in that garden too. Yeah, the peppers, the green station, and the herb station. And that's real, there's a couple more things. There's a dwarf cherry in the front and uh, a Granny Smith apple tree back there on that black mat, so. Another reason I put the mat back there, so now we can pick up the drop easier on the apple tree, easier to see them. Mm -hmm. well, let me show you one more thing. This has nothing to do with, uh... ah, dang it. I gotta get these tools in today. This plant's really cool. I might have to tell you next week because I forgot what it is, but it's pretty. That's a nice face too. I like that. Oh, I want to ask y'all about that. Over here, uh, that's a Lenten rose. That's a maroon. And then various impatience and whatnot. Begonias up there. Little decor station that's dropping seed. And that's basically turned into a chipmunk cafeteria. Little chippies found. These things. Found us? They're about, I'm gonna say they're six or seven gallons. Um, I had purchased some mums for this, but there's just not enough sun here. So if you got a suggestion for a perennial that could go from shade to part shade, drop them down there for me, seriously. I'm wide open. Um, I want to put something in here once and not have to mess with it every year. All right, I'm sorry I was an hour early this week. Had to be, got a meeting at six, run six to eight, and I'm doing this as a premiere. I don't like to set up premieres and not show up for my own premieres. It's kind of rude, don't you think? <laughs> Drop me some comments down there, whatever I was talking about. Tips, suggestions, I'm all ears, baby. Peace, y'all.